Hello, and welcome back for another Torah Tuesday. Before we start, I have a quick announcement for my Spanish-speaking viewers. Si hablas español, tengo buenas noticias. Mi libro, Bearing God's Name, ha sido traducido al español. Portadores de su nombre, la importancia del Sinaí. Puede ver los videos de Torah Tuesday con subtítulos en español, haciendo clic en el botón CC debajo del video y seleccionando español. Disfrutas. Okay, for this week, we are continuing our study of Exodus in chapter 4. And before we dive into the details of what is one of the most difficult and mysterious passages in the entire book of Exodus, I thought we should take a moment to step back and look at a little bit bigger picture. So we're looking at verses 18 to 31, and I've planned at least four more videos on the sections of this. Um, so we'll get down into more granular detail. But first, I'm hoping to convince you that we need to read these verses as a unit, that they're a tightly constructed literary unit. And I think the reason why we have so much trouble with verses 24 to 26, the strange circumcision story where God is trying to kill Moses and Zipporah saves his life, we, we struggle with that because we failed to see how the whole unit is tightly constructed and because we fail to see how this unit functions in the book as a whole. So in the next mini series of videos, we're gonna be diving into these difficult texts. I find them so fascinating. So first today, I just wanna show you some of the connections between these um, sections of verses 18 through 31. So you could go through your Bible through these verses and just see if you can sort of chunk them into scenes. And if you, if you put them in scenes, we've got at least four different scenes, as many as six scenes that are all kind of rapid fire back to back, just short vignettes back to back. And what I find fascinating is that there are lots of textual links between the scenes. And so although it seems like different things are happening, there's words that connect them. So I'm just gonna run through a list of some of these connections. And if you've gone through your text and broken them into uh, paragraphs, you can sort of draw lines between them and see just how interconnected they are. So if you wanna pause the video, make paragraphs, and then unpause when you're ready, uh, I'll be waiting. Okay, so, in verse 18, Moses says he's going to return to Egypt. And in verse 19, Yahweh tells Moses to return to Egypt. So there's an obvious link. But there are also links in these uh, verses that are based on Hebrew words that might not come through in English. So for example, in verse 18, um, Moses is speaking with his father-in-law, Jethro. And the word for father-in-law in Hebrew is choten. In verse 25, after Zipporah performs the circumcision, she says, you've become a bridegroom of blood to me. That word bridegroom is the word chatan. So we have choten chatan, the same consonants, just different vocalization, different vowels. So those two are linked. Verse 19 speaks of the commission of Moses. Verse 27 speaks of the commission of Aaron in very similar terms. Verse 22 talks about the firstborn of Yahweh. Verse 23 talks about the firstborn of Pharaoh. So those are linked. In verse 19, Pharaoh seeks to kill Moses, or Pharaoh sought, had sought to kill Moses. In verse 24, Yahweh sought to kill Moses. So those are clearly linked. Verse 23 speaks about Pharaoh's son. Verse 24 speaks about Moses' son. In verse 24, Yahweh encounters Moses using the verb pagash. And in verse 27, Aaron encounters Moses using the verb pagash. This one is especially fun because it's a relatively rare word and it's used in exactly the same form. Vayif gashehu is the word for and he met him. So it's the exact same form in verse 24 and verse 27. And then the word that follows that, he met him and what? is like a, a rhyming word in these two scenes. So in verse 24, Yahweh vayif kashehu Moses vayavakesh, and he sought to kill him. 
And in verse 27, Aaron vayifkashehu's Moses, vayish vayishak, and he kisses him. So vayavakesh and vayishak are the same, have the same two key consonants, the sheen and the kof, and they have them in reverse order. So what we have is this brilliant narrator putting these two scenes side by side in which Yahweh encounters Moses and seeks to kill him, and then Aaron encounters Moses and kisses him, and the two sound alike, and sandwiched in the middle is the, the turning point of the whole narrative where Zipporah saves the day and circumcises, and so Moses' life is no longer in danger. And you can see that his life is no longer in danger because when his brother meets him, he doesn't seek to kill him, he kisses him. So there's this really cool play going on uh, behind the scenes. See why you need to learn Hebrew? It's so much fun. A couple of other connections that link these scenes together. In verse 18, Moses says that he intends to see his brothers in Egypt. And then verses 27 to 31 are the resolution of that. Moses and his brother Aaron see the Israelites in Egypt. So there's the resolution of his intention from verse 18. Verse 20 mentions Moses' wife and sons. And verse 25 uh, mentions his wife and son, like they, they play into the narrative there. So all of these links, and there are others that you could perhaps find as well, all these links between the different scenes in this tightly constructed unit shows us that we ought to be reading this together. And in future weeks, we're going we're gonna to zoom in on each of these scenes and see what we can learn from what's happening and how this is functioning in the larger message of the book so that it can help us see um, how, the, how the narrator wants us to understand this strange scene. Because if we just read it by itself, it's very bizarre. But if we read it in context of the entire book, it's illuminating. And I can't wait to show you how. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.